to solve. Shit. He's brought a whole battalion with him. All right, we'll slow down. We gotta take care of these jokers first. You have a plan? Yeah. Sure. Do we have a plan? Please. We all know that you're a badass, Nadine, but what you don't know is that Chloe has some badass ninja skills of her own. Thanks for that. But I'll have it under control. Yeah, but I can't let you have all the fun. So whether you're struggling on crushing, trying to earn one of those stealth-related trophies, or you just really want to impress Nadine, Good work, Fraser. this guide has you covered. I've combed through all the stealthable sections of Uncharted The Lost Legacy on crushing difficulty, but don't worry, if you're on a lower difficulty, these methods should still work too, and you'll probably have an easier time. If you're looking for that certain encounter that you're having problems with, check the description box below as I've listed everything that's in this video with timestamps. Just a quick little note before we get going, I've not used the silence pistol on any of the encounters in chapter 3 and chapter 4 because there is a trophy related to killing all enemies without using any guns or explosives and I was like, if a job's worth doing, might as well do it right. Also sometimes the silence pistol is a little bit more trouble than it's worth. The enemies in this game seem to have super duper hypodronic blast bionic vision, which means if you don't hide a body perfectly, then if it's in someone's line of sight, they will definitely see it from any distance. Finally, the strategies in this guide are by no means the only way that you can stealth through its section. The game gives you lots of options to play with. These are just the ones that I found worked for me consistently. With that all said, let's get down to business. You got this, Chloe. Here we are at the first area that you can get your stealth on. So this is at the end of chapter three. So make sure you park the Jeep well and hidden. That probably wasn't the best parking of the Jeep I've ever done, but uh, did the job. Uh, go through this uh, long grass here. There's gonna be two guys that walk by. Now you're not gonna go and get them just yet. So let them walk on by. Don't be tempted to go too early. I like to go when I hear the guy say, prove me wrong. I feel like that's my go time. Cause otherwise they can side I see you if you go too soon. So for the next five people, we're going to have to go quick. It's going to be like pulling off a plaster. You just have to go boom, boom, boom. So get this guy, and then the sniper will jump down because he wants to talk to the dead guy, but I'm afraid that will be a conversation that they may never have. There's a guy leaning over the edge here. Now what you're going to want to do for him is when you climb up there, don't just run up and mash square, but make Chloe actually stop, then go for the kill. Otherwise you're going to kick him off the edge and you don't want to do that because those two here are the racket behind them. So uh, I always just like to stop. Take a breather, then press square. So for those two out the way, we're going to go around and get the guy that's in the truck. Just being a little bit cautious because I don't want him to see me because they can see you and it's really annoying sometimes. So better to be safe than sorry. So he's going to turn around, look at the lockbox. Then I can go and hang off the side of the truck. Also going to wait for the guy in the right over there just to walk around and then I can pull him down safely. If you'd like, you can get the lockbox and uh, inside there is a silenced pistol. Uh, you could probably use the silenced pistol to take out this guy. I just like to wait until he's far enough out of eye shot from anybody else to see his body. So you could shoot him here if you wanted. And there is the last of his kind, blissfully unaware that we have murdered all of his team, and he is next. So uh, for this, I am going to kill him without the gun. So I just waited for him to, you know, get up and go to the other side. You can just climb up here really quickly and go behind him and finish the job. Uh. 
Oh, I think that's it. That's the way to do it. Not bad work. Thank you for the assist. Let's get going. Into chapter four now, and I'm going to go through the fortresses first in alphabetical order and then go through all the outposts. So that means that we're going through the Axe Fortress first. This one was a bit of a pain to do ugh, because the area is so small and the enemies, they just walk around in very, very small walk paths. Ugh, this made it infinitely hard. But where there's a will, there's a way. And I found the way. Now, it can go either two ways, though. In this example that I'm showing you now, it's a totally stealth um, run, but sometimes they can see the body of the second person I'm going to take out. So I'll explain. It's not the end of the world if that happens. You've still got the upper hand to take them out of stealth, but I'll, I'll explain when we get there. So at the moment, we're just going to wait. This is a bit of a waiting game, this one. I'm going to wait for this armoured guy to come round into the perfect position because you've got a very small window of opportunity to pull him over the edge. All right, so now he's moving into position and I'm going to keep my eye on the guy in the background because you're going to want to wait for him to turn around and walk. But you're not going to pull him just yet. You, There's still someone else you've got to look out for. So once he's gone, you can turn your camera and look at the two people in the back. There's another armoured guy there. When he turns around, that's when you pull him over. Once you hear the guy say that he didn't see anything, then you're good to go and swim over to this area. Uh, you're going to want to get right in the corner so that uh, no one can see you. I thought the lily pads would be like the long grass of the water, but it's not. It's, it's not. Everyone can still see you in the lily pads. That's what is really annoying about this area. So we're just going to look at the two people on the screen. And when that guy moves, you move. Make sure you give him a good old boot into the water. For some reason, I struggle to take cover on this wall. Absolutely no idea why, but it happens every single time. So when you do take cover on this wall, check uh, to see what everyone's doing. You've got a nice view of everyone because this is where things could go different because sometimes they see the body in the water, sometimes they don't. Not really sure why that's the case, but uh, if they do see the body in the water, not the end of the world, they'll just sort of split up and walk around this area that you can see in front of you. And one person or two people, they'll kind of come into this cave bit here. So you can also take them out in this area, but you do still have an advantage because then you can sort of go around and pick them off one by one uh, at that point. So I was just checking to here to be 100% sure that they haven't seen the body because I was a little bit like, oh, for you. So when the, the opportunity arises and everyone's got their back to you, then you can run up here and take out the last three guys. Helpfully, these two are going to go back to back. So that's a good opportunity for you to kill them one by one. That guy over there, he's fascinated by whatever's in the water. So he'll be looking down there for ages. So you've uh, got a lot of time to go around and uh, finish him off as well. Thanks for the assistance. Let's move on. Next one is the Bow Fortress. This one is a bit tricky at the beginning. Gotta let go of the grapple rope as early as possible. They will always like go huh at you. Don't worry, you just don't want to get... If you go too far into the grass, then you'll get seen. But uh, other than that, it's quite cool. That might take a little bit of practice. That was quite frustrating. So once you've done that, come around here and you're going to pull this guy over. But not just yet. Keep an eye on that armoured guy standing up there because he will see the crime. Even though he's really far away, he can see it. There's going to be two people over this bit. I'm not sure why I did this. That was a mistake. <laughs> what you're supposed to do is climb up here. But uh, yeah, two people down those stairs are going to have a conversation about ration packs. So... Wait for them to finish that conversation. I see this highlighted guy. He's our next target. They will no longer beg from outsiders. Once he's at the top, wait until he turns all the way around and then get him. No one's going to see his body here, so that is cool. This next bit is a little bit tricky. I'm climbing up here so I get a good vantage point of the three people. What, who we're going to go for is we're going to go for the guy leaning over the edge. He's our next target. But I want to make sure that all the people that could potentially see me boot him to his death are not looking. 
So I'm waiting here for the armoured guy to go back to his original position. And you see that guy in the far corner? We also want to wait for him to not look. Now the reason we have to take this guy out first is to make that guy in the far distance walk his next walk path. So get right behind him, give him a good old boot. You don't want to do the uh, normal neck break. You want to make sure you definitely boot him off the edge. That will cause the other guy to start walking back and forth to the gate over there because normally those two will have a conversation about how one of them sucks at shooting or something. Funny enough, this armoured guy cannot see you standing behind this wheel, so uh, you're pretty safe here. Go up to him, pull off his hat and uh, break his neck and no one will see him. Now we only have four people left, so about halfway done. Now we're just waiting for this guy to get into position so that we can pull him into the long grass. Now don't stand too near the edge of the long grass because sometimes you can get spotted. That's why I was standing a little bit far back. Sometimes Nadine may get him for you, so uh, that's always a plus. So we're going to hang here and wait to get this guy when he goes over here. Now underneath him there is a lockbox with a science pistol. So uh, if you want to get that, you're more than welcome to. There's only three people left now. Just uh, going to look down to make sure that guy's going to look over the edge. He spends a lot of time looking over that edge. So so you've got time to kill these next two people before he moves. So I'm just going to wait here to get him. Got to do that kind of quick because he's going to come back and uh, stand over the ledge a bit. So I'm going to jump down, kill the next guy. And then for the final guy, who will still be looking over the edge by the time we get around, we can kill him with a little finesse. But if you want to be a bit more patient than me, you can. But finesse! All right, we're clear. See? I can't be quiet when need be. Let's press on. Just what I was going to say. And now we're at the Trident Fortress, which for me was the hardest one to do. Oh, this one drove me nuts. I think it's because it's just so long and there's so many enemies. I think there's about 13 enemies that you have to kill. So, oh, this is a bit of a nightmare. But now i've worked out the pattern and this one has worked for me i managed to do this a couple of times again it just it just takes a little while so uh you gotta be patient patience is definitely key in this one so i'm just gonna wait uh here because there's gonna be two guys that uh are gonna walk around if you have the science pistol left over from a previous one then you could definitely uh use that here again i'm not gonna bother with it there's also a lockbox in that building there which uh you could get this has a science pistol in it if you needed it but uh doing this the old-fashioned way with me old fists hang up uh, on this wall here and wait until the furthest guy turns around then you can go and kill this guy you got to do it quickly as soon as he turns around then go for it otherwise someone will see the crime in progress now, if you wanted, this would be a good time to get the science pistol if you wanted to. But make sure, look up there in between the tree and uh, the building. You can see there's a guy walking up there. So I'm waiting for him to pass. And then I'm going to run into this long grass. Because what we're going to do now is we're not actually going to kill anyone. We want to trigger a conversation. So this conversation here will happen about the wheels. Trigger that, run back, and trigger the next conversation. Where there's going to be two guys talking about restoring honor or something. I don't quite remember. So just hop up here and uh, make sure that's happening now if they're not going to have this conversation i did it again one time and they didn't actually have this conversation they started doing their walk cycle already it's not the end of the world you'll still be able to as long as you haven't huh them then you'll be good uh, so go back in the long grass make sure you definitely crouch in this long grass as well to not get spotted sometimes i was being a little bit impatient and then they'd see me and you don't want that because that would definitely screw up the uh, patterns so the guy furthest away he's going to come and walk through this long grass next so you're going to want to stand well crouch even quite far to the edge because if you're too close to him when he's walking through he will definitely see you um which you don't want nadine's going to do me a solid here and take him out but you can do it if you want depends where she's going to stand and then we're going to run over into this long grass here and make sure you go to the furthest one and look at what nadine's going to do all right, she's not. Sometimes she'll, if she's in like the patch in front, she'll take this next guy out for you, which is uh, always nice. But I'd rather not be too close to the edge again in case someone sees me. So I'm just gonna wait here for him to come back around. So like I said earlier, if they didn't have their conversation, you're gonna have to wait to the next rotation of this. So you wouldn't get him now. You'd get him after he walks there and back again because the person that walks behind 
will be at, will be behind you. So just bear that in mind. Once you have waited for this guy to come back around, you're going to have to do a very quick maneuver. This was the only way that I found that you can kill this guy without anyone seeing his body later. So take cover on the wall and pull him around. That's a quick circle square maneuver there. That's the only guaranteed way that I found that you could murder him. Because otherwise, all the other things I tried, everyone spotted his body. So yeah, that's the safest route. In this long grass here, you're going to want to stay back. Because that guy walking there can see you if you're... Like, if I was where Nadine was, he'd see me. I don't know why he can see me in the long grass. It's absolutely infuriating. But there we go. Once he turns his back, we're going to leave him. You're going to live to fight another two or three minutes. We'll, but we'll be coming back for him. We're going to crawl around here. And if you make sure you go over a little bit like I have, Nadine will run over and jump in the long grass. And she'll take out this next guy for you. I mean, you're welcome to take him out yourself if you want to, but... I like the safety of the fact that your AI partner, they'll never be seen. So, uh, look at that. If that was me, I'd be caught. And if that guy sees you, it's not a hurt. It's an instant, oh my god, everybody murder you. So that's always a worry. Thankfully, though, you can actually kill the, um, I don't know what you'd call that guy. He's armoured and he has a very big gun. I would almost go and call him, like, the Gatling guy. But he's not, is that a Gatling gun? I guess it is. It's a golden gun. But yeah, you don't even have to pull this top off his head. You can just murder him in the grass. Now, the reason I'm actually waiting here uh, is because I wanted to make sure that guy that we let live uh, walks back down so he doesn't witness me. Because we don't want him to go, huh? Because he's in a really nice walk cycle with someone else you'll see later. So we definitely don't want to spoil that. So while the other guy was looking, we can come back round. And then once he walks into the grass, slowly make your way up to him. And look at that. How is that possible? I don't know. But I'm thankful it is. This is going to require a little bit of waiting now. Because you're going to want to wait for this guy to come back uh, up this way. So you can kill him in a safe area where no one will see you. When this guy gets to about here-ish, you probably is your best bet to um, kill him. And then look at this. This guy perfectly comes round at the same time. So you can uh, go and kill him. And no one will see his body there either. Just for safety, I'm going to hang off the ledge here. Because that sniper guy up top, I don't want him to see me. Now, I think in this one, I got a tad lucky. Earlier when I pulled that guy around the wall, I think he might have been alerted and possibly thought something was going on. And that slowed down his walk cycle, which has helped me out in the next bit. But it doesn't really matter either way. That's just sort of made sure that I could do this a lot quicker. Whereas when you come to it, they may not be in this position. But the aim of it is really to try and kill this guy what so that his that? body is hidden behind this piece of cover. So you might have to wait a bit to get the perfect timing. As I said, I got kind of lucky. But even if you don't do it perfectly and someone does see the body, there's only two guys left. You're going to be able to get them probably so just leg it run round the edge and just break the two guys next the furthest guy away uh, he actually jumps off from his um, position and starts walking around the floor so that makes him even easier to get really but uh yeah for some reason i just really screwed up running i'd actually prefer to run around the top bit but for this one i fell off the edge try and do a better job than i have at climbing because clearly i suck <laughs> Hang on. That's it. The side's clear. Not bad, Fraser. I'll take a not bad from you. This bit I'm calling Trident for Escape, as it doesn't actually appear in the Encounter Select menu. So after you've solved that little puzzle, you're going to have to leave and reinforcements are on their way. Unfortunately for you, the reinforcements already know you're there, so this is very tricky to take out everyone, especially on crushing. There's no particular walk path that everyone's going on, and there's just a ton of people. So personally, I think the best thing to do is not climb on that branch, but it is to escape uh, with minimal damage. Because it's, oh, it'll just take way too long to take everybody out. And there are quite a lot of people standing around in quite strategical uh, positions. So uh, that definitely makes things tougher. 
Now, in order to do this, we're going to have to only kill two people, and um, that will facilitate our escape. So, you see this armoured guy here? He's the first to die. They seem to walk... I tried many different ways of trying to just escape, because I realised that would be the, the best way. But, um, this is probably the quickest way to the door. Now, someone's going to see you. Well, think they see you, but that's good. We're going to walk away out of the line of sight, because we want that guy to... Uh, to check on his friend because you need him to get out of position so that we can get around the back of him so as long as you're not directly where the crime took place he, sh he won't see you but if you are staying there he'll uh, see you could probably try and make it out of that tall grass faster than i did now again we're gonna just wait for there's a guy over there and we're just gonna climb up around here now he's i think he sees the body behind which causes him to walk away but even if he doesn't you're probably able to just quickly take him out in the grass and be fine now we're almost at the door. Uh, all you've got to really do now is, you see that guy there? Wait until he turns around and then you are homeward dry. Now we're moving on to all the outposts that you can find within the chapter 4 open world, air quotes, area. The first one is Lake Outpost. I find that the best way to approach this is driving from the direction that I have just driven and parking your car here. No one will see the car here uh, because, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, they do spot the jeep and it's very annoying. I know there's also a rope. I tried going down that rope slide and someone saw me every single time. I'm not sure, maybe on a lower difficulty where their eyesight's not crazy that it might be worthwhile, but this time from going this direction, I find that uh, it's the, your best bet. Oh. So pull this RPG guy down. Now don't be tempted to uh, scurry across to get the next guy just yet. You'll never make it. And uh, then he'll see you and you'll mess the whole thing up. So uh, wait until he goes back round before making the approach on him. So when you do go over here, you wanna, you're going to want to make sure that uh, you go as far across this edge as possible. So about here-ish, because that also helps the other people in the background not see. I found that if I wasn't in this position, then someone... Uh, that guy particularly in the background who crouches down in a sec, he will notice uh, you pulling him down. So... When he gets over here and you can see it's safe in the background, pull him down. There's only a few more people left. The next one uh, is a guy on the other side of this big uh, building thing. I'm just going to be really careful going across here because I just don't want him to see me or any of the others for that matter. So I'm just uh, checking my corners. You'll see that the guy that was crouching down earlier, he's right in the corner there. And I've seen that he's just walked the other way so I know that things are good. So once this guy is in this position, we could jump down. And uh, now we can take out this guy. So I'm going to just pull him over this ledge. That guy there is not looking, so uh, this hides the body. And then you're free to go and take out the last two when their backs are both turned. All right. In the clear. Let's have a look around. For the forest outpost, as you can see on my left very briefly, that was the entrance to Monkey Island where you give all those tokens to get the ruby bracelet thing. I find this is the best approach to this area for this method. There are lots of different ways, so you're free to experiment how you wish, but this is the way that I like to do it. So we're going to be doing a lot of fast and loose here. We want to take out a lot of people very quickly. Starting with this guy, I like to just do this takedown personally, just to make super sure that no one will see the body, even though we are going to take this guy out like this. But that was just, you know, I got accustomed to just doing that. That was the, the method, but you know. Depending on uh, if you've already aggroed these people or not, or if you've even driven by the area, uh, the three people, including this guy and two in the distance there, they may have a conversation at that wall uh, talking about it. If they do, no biggie. Uh, the road is still the same. This guy that we just killed will walk back to this long grass and that's when you can uh, take him out then. So uh, things don't change if they have the conversation. 
I'm just going to wait here until the perfect opportunity arises for me to leg it to that next piece of long grass and that is when both of their backs are turned. Before taking this guy out, I'm just going to have a quick camera turn just to make sure that guy is definitely not looking, but uh, you should be good to go. And then once again, I'm also just going to be really careful before taking this guy out, as I just want to make sure that his back is turned to me. I don't want all the, huh? What did you see? Oh, did you see anything? Nothing hit. You know, just waste time. Best not to go through all that palaver and uh, just wait until it's absolutely safe. <laughs> Now there's only three more people left and you can take these next three out rather quickly. Shouldn't be uh, too much bother. We've just got uh, this guy here. As long as you make it here quite quickly, no one will see his body. And then uh, you're good to take the last two out. The last one being a sniper. So uh, he's not going to cause too much trouble as long as you uh, kill this guy when he gets out of his uh, line of sight. Let's see what we've got here. On to the meadow outpost now, and it doesn't really matter which way you come at this one, as there aren't any enemies here currently. And again, it doesn't really matter where you park the car either, because Nadine will helpfully park it somewhere else for you once you grab the token. So uh, let's just skip forward to uh, after I've grabbed it. Compared to some of the others in this guide, this one's probably the easiest to do, as uh, these people aren't very good at their jobs and uh, they don't do a very good job of uh, patrolling the area really so we're going to just hang off this uh, ledge here as i mentioned they will spot the uh, 4x4 but it's that's inevitable you can't really help that so when this guy does a little run but as he runs you are able to just quickly grab him off the ledge so we're going to wait in this tall grass as well as another guy will come round and then you've only got three more left and they all just stand on the edge of the cliff if you can even call this a cliff and it's not really uh, too hard to get them. Just do a wide uh, walk around to get the first guy that I get. And then, um, yeah, pretty simple after that. This is our last outpost and it is the turret outpost. Depending on whether you've already driven by here before, these guys may have already had the conversation. If they haven't, you can do what I'm doing now. If they have already had the conversation, then by the time you've climbed up on that ledge, someone will already be walking towards you and you could just uh, pull him down and uh, you should be good. Now, um, because I jumped there, I broke up their conversation. It just makes things a bit quicker. Uh, normally Nadine gets this guy for me, but uh, if not, you can uh, just wait and uh, get him yourself. Now, I'm um, looking at the guys in front. I'm just going to wait till the guy who's kneeling down gets up and turns around. And then we're going to just bolt it, run to that pillar there. And as soon as you get close, press a uh, circle. Because the guy up there will see, but um, you're going to be safe from anyone really... Um, actually seeing you if you take cover here it's funny because the good thing about when they go huh something there everyone all looks towards you but as soon as they get the all clear everyone turns their back and it's like the best time so sometimes i like to use that to my advantage it's like a good time to get someone to look at you because look in a sec everybody turns their back to you and it's a great chance to uh, make a move into the next position so what we're going to do now is uh, this guy he gets to live for quite a while we're going to come back to him because our first portal call is uh, a guy that's at top because anytime you try and pull this guy down the see him up there he will always see so he's got to go first and then we'll come back to you oh, 
after he's gone, uh, the next bit's going to require a bit of waiting around. So the guy that comes and stands over here, the next time he comes back is not the best time to pull him off because uh, people are looking. So you're going to have to wait till the next rotation. As tempting as it is, don't go for it. You'll see by the time he gets back around, the guy standing behind him will be looking directly at you. All right, here he comes. This is the moment and the next three people we're going to take out really quickly. So we're going to run up here just to check that um, that guy's not looking. Also, I'm keeping my eye on the guy at the bottom because I don't want him to see either. When this guy turns his back, we're going to go boom, boom, take these two out and then we're going to jump down and take the last guy out. I'm also going the long way around to get him just because these people, their peripheral vision is mental. So I always like to make sure I come behind them all. Now, uh, as you may or may not know, reinforcements are going to show up. To be honest, I think the best thing to do is to take them all out with the turret. Just go up there and as they all arrive and jump out of the uh, truck, you can mow them all down before they can even get a shot off on you. Should be should be able to do it. But as this is a stealth guide... Uh, you know, I have to I have to see the whole thing through because you can actually stealth them all. It just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of waiting around, but here it is. Someone took him out. We are not alone. Spread out and look. Nothing here. Clear. Good. Hooray! We're finally out of chapter four, and this is chapter six, the APC fight. Now, this one is definitely a tricky one. Before I get into this, do not get out of this long grass until this APC is 100% behind that building, because it will see you. As frustrating as it is, it is it, this thing has some crazy, crazy vision. So... General rule of thumb here is always be on the lookout for the APC because if that sees you, it's game over. That will insta see you. So that that God, this one really got my heart pumping. I was so scared doing this. Also, the other thing is uh, I like to roll between these little patches of grass. I feel that gives me some extra safety. Sometimes when I'd walk between the two, Chloe wouldn't always duck down the grass properly. Uh, same again after I killed this guy, I just give a little stoppage because sometimes walking over his body causes Chloe to sort of stand up in the grass and um, yeah everyone is on hyper alertness so I'm just being like really careful when making these transitions in the grass uh, we're going to take this guy out right on the corner here I find that's the best way if you're any sort of further over then uh, a guy in the background might be able to see you if you wanted you could take him out and throw him into the actual grass but this is just the way I like to uh, do it so the plan here is to go around and take everybody out and then focus our fire on the APC, just so that you're not getting mauled at the end by everyone shooting at you. What you're looking for with these two is when the top guy has his back turned to you and when the guy at the bomb is looking into uh, the ruin, that's when you can run forward and we're going to climb up to pull down the top guy. Yeah. 
Now it's time to get the guy below, but you're going to need to be patient with this one. You can just run in there if you want and pull this guy around the corner on the first time he peeks in, but I found there was a 50-50% chance that someone would see you and uh, or even automatically see you, which is even worse. But on the second time he comes round, no one ever saw me ever. So I feel like this is the uh, safest uh, time to go. Grab the, um, the C4 and the science pistol. Because we are actually going to use the science pistol in this one. Now that there's not a trophy attached to um, these later ones, I, uh, I use the science pistol. I just feel like with those first ones, if it could be done without the science pistol, then I was doing it. I was like hell bent on that. Uh, so we're going to wait and now we can grab him around the corner. Uh, now we're good to go to the next part. This can be tricky to make uh, the transition from this side to the other side. What I'm going to do here is I'm waiting for the APC to come around the corner. As you can see when the light shines, uh, it highlights there's a guy there. Now you're going to wait, have to wait until the APC is 100% around that corner. That's why I'm running towards the camera slightly and then round. Because I saw when that guy's back turned and then I ran towards the camera and came round. Because if I ran like straight away... The ABC would see me all the way from across the map, and it was actually infuriating. You're going to have to do the same again for this bit, because we're going to want to get into that long grass. So I'm just keeping my eye, and as soon as it's round the corner, just checking that they're, them guys aren't looking, and now we can go over and uh, break this guy's neck. Make sure you as well, when you're coming to this guy, you're right behind him when you uh, get into the long grass. If you come at him from an angle, he'll side-eye see you, and uh, yeah, you don't want that, because then he will probably see you in the grass. As the APC just went past, I know all is good that I can uh, drag him down. And now we're going to open this lockbox down here just to get uh, an RPG shot. Once you have that, uh, we're going to go up and round these stairs and meet with uh, Nadine. But uh, we want to just quickly make sure that this APC isn't going to see us. So as soon as it's uh, gone around the corner, uh, run up the stairs. I like to run around the rock just because it makes me feel uh, a little bit safer. Bidding, you all right? Come back for more. Save it. Never get anywhere with these bastards looking for us. Come on. Now that you're here, you're going to want to wait for the perfect opportunity to jump over the edge into the grass. Now, the reason we're not using the grappling hook is because at the bottom, there's a lock box. Well, actually, I think it's unlocked that we can get some supplies from, which we really want. So I'm just going to wait until the perfect moment comes, which is going to be when the APC is out of sight. And when these two, so that guy jumps down and then the guy at the top, he'll turn his back to you. And now, just when it turns the corner, I'm going to go for the jump. This wasn't the best jump. I would have preferred to jump straight into the grass. I probably mistimed that bit. Oh, there's also some more science pistol ammo, which I will definitely need because uh, the science pistol, when you pick it up, you might get seven shots. You might get five shots. It's all uh, pot luck. And uh, I'm not brilliant at um, getting a headshot straight away. So uh, I need them I need them bullets. Uh, so once the ABC again is not there, we're going to climb up here and uh, grab this guy. Now it might take him a little while, but he will come by uh, where you are. He'll sort of walk by and as he's walking by, then you grab him. Uh, don't be tempted to pull him off on the other side because see that guy down there? He'll see the body. With him out of the picture, you now get some more RPG bullets. Well, just one more. There is a lockbox um, straight ahead of us. Uh, you might be able to see it in the corner after we um, kill this guy. He's going to jump down and we'll just grab him as he walks by. So if you're feeling daring, you can go for that lockbox and then there'll be another RPG shot. I found that whenever I went there, the time it took like to unlock the box, you don't have much time between when the ABC comes back around and I would choke under the pressure. Like some, one time I managed to do it and I just quickly rolled into the grass and I got away with it. But a lot of the time, the ABC would just see me and uh, yeah, not good. So we're going to do something else instead. We're going to grab another bit of C4 uh, to count as explosion instead. So there, here is the last guy. He's uh, over there. Thankfully, he's someone without armor, so we can just give him a couple of shots and he's down. And uh, once the ABC is around the corner, we're going to get our last bit of C4. 
I don't know why I went that way. Thought I was gonna go. I thought I thought the box was over there actually. So yeah. Now we're gonna go here and uh, grab the next piece of C4 and take cover all the way here just to make sure it doesn't see you because that thing can ram you if it sees you so you don't want to be trapped here and um yeah once uh, it's out of the way i'm gonna hide in this long grass and then i'm gonna plant the c4 on the floor now i made a bit of a mistake here i tried to throw the c4 onto the apc but i missed it didn't cost me too much but uh i think it might just be best to throw a bunch on the floor I was also a bit worried that it might see me throwing it, so I just was like, I'd made it this far and I was just so afraid that I just didn't want to screw up. But um, yeah, throw them all down and um, yeah, when it comes round, set them off, RPG, boom. And even though Nadine's mad at us, I'm pretty sure she's up there watching and she's secretly impressed, but she doesn't want to admit it. I mean, how can you not be impressed? After this, you'll have to deal with the reinforcements, and it doesn't seem like you can go back into stealth mode. I did try waiting around, but Chloe never seemed to duck back into the tall grass. But go around the map, pick up some good weapons, and get around the back of them, and you should be good. This is the checkpoint for Hello Below at the beginning of Chapter 7. The encounter select didn't work for this one, so I had to do it from the actual chapter select. So this was the uh, checkpoint that it gives you, but that's after you've climbed this whole thing. So here, someone always sees you as you're going across this thing. It's very irritating. So just hang tight here and uh, wait. I'm just looking at both of the snipers and waiting for them to get back to uh, looking down their sniper rifles. Uh, I like to just give it a little second wait until I can see that guy sort of flare at me and then go across. But if someone sees you, don't worry. Just freeze. When you make it to this side, don't move. Here, you're going to want to lean against this wall but do it as far away as possible from everyone because there was an armored guy that jumped down and sometimes if you're here too early he'll see you so once that guy makes it at the top of the stairs we're gonna dash across and break his neck and then we can uh, take out everyone in this room now i said before that the trident fort one was hard this one was really hard too this one i think i spent the most time trying to do because it's not actually possible to stealth everybody in this whole room so i'm going to take you as far as we can go because reinforcements come and they all walk about and uh, things get uh, messy. So before uh, I make the transition to the next bit of cover, there's a guy really far at the background. And believe it or not, if you don't wait for him to turn around, he will see you. So you might as well just take those few seconds just to uh, wait. Here we're going to uh, grab this guy coming round. You should be good, actually. Every time I've pulled him around, I think out of the millions of times I did this, and it was like millions of times, the armoured guy only spotted him once. So if it happens, it's, in my opinion, just really unlucky. But uh, it should be um, okay. We're going to wait for the armoured guy to make his way across again the second time, just because I know no one will be looking um, from the other side. And uh, when you do go to him, try and go, uh, like, I always like to do a big sort of oval round to him and then get him as he's in the middle of this uh, area, just so that no one will see the body, this bit of wall will uh, cover it. Also on my way along, I'm just picking up all the weapons that I uh, might want because uh, I'm getting, gearing up for the fight to come. I did have a science pistol, but I don't know where that came from. There isn't a science pistol in this area, so that's why I was hesitant to use it because depending on what weapon you had when you came to this area, I don't want to be like, whoa, use a science pistol here and you may not have it. There is a lockbox over there. There's nothing in there that will help you stealth-wise. It's like a pistol, the one that begins with a K. So uh, I'm not opening that um, in this. So I'm waiting here for the perfect rotation to come around. If I went too early, then um, the people won't be in the position that I want them to be in. Up there, right in the middle, there is an armoured guy. So I'm just looking at him. And uh, there's that guy there. So I'm just moving out of cover now because I want to make sure that I do a good jump. you got one shot of this. And you want to make sure that you get it right because it's really hard to make it back. So good jump and grab onto that. Wasn't wasn't the perfect jump I've ever done. But uh, yeah, if you, if you miss it, you might be in trouble. Whilst hanging off this ledge, you want to be in this position. The reason for that is when you pull down the armoured guy, his body will fall off the edge of the cliff. If you're somewhere else, it will be lying there and everyone will see the uh, evidence. So even though you don't get the grabby hands, you can still grab him. I was looking at that guy below to make sure he uh, had turned. And there he is, he goes right off the edge. This next maneuver can be very tricky to uh, pull off because someone will see, but you're gonna have to just you have to be quick about it. 
So I'm just looking at everyone. It's these three people. These are the people of my nightmares. These are the ones that took me forever to work out how I was going to kill them without the other ones seeing. They're all tightly compact together. But I think I worked it out. So there is actually another opportunity to run to the other side. But I found this one. Uh, you had a little bit more room for error. So we're going to wait until this guy turns around. And then leg it to the other side. So we're just going to run, run, run. And as soon as you get close to here, just press circle. Just start pressing it. Because someone will see. But as long as you press circle... Uh, you'll be in cover and you'll be okay. So it's usually that guy right in the middle there who will um, see. But um, that shouldn't affect uh, what's going to happen next. And no one will see you as well while you're uh, taking cover here. So the next guy we're going for is the one with the helmet. When uh, this guy turns around, you're going to want to do the jumping attack on him because we want to make sure his body is hidden behind that... Um, see, look. Boom! Perfectly hidden behind... What is this? I don't know. Some sort of stone thing. But yeah, then that guy won't see. And uh, now you're good to take him out. And you can jump over this ledge and take him down. I'm also making sure to grab a lot of uh, grenades because uh, I want to use that for the, the big brute guy coming up. This bit here... Uh, this guy looks like he's far away, but as soon as uh, Chloe gets those grabby hands, mash the square button and you will pull him around. But always be um, checking where the sniper guy is looking. This is the last guy we can take out in true stealth. And again, just looking uh, at where that sniper guy is because um, he will he will see, even if he's not really looking. I want to make sure his laser is far, like about here-ish. It's far in the distance. I just wanted to really be, be sure. And then you can boot this guy off the edge. Now that's everyone uh, you can take out before you can cross the invisible line. So if you want to get that lockbox, you can. You want to go back and get stuff. Do it now because as soon as you cross the invisible line, everyone is coming for you. And they will see all the dead bodies that you've left along the way. So, as you can see, the whole place looks flipping empty when you're here. But here we go. As we're going to get closer, there's going to be someone with the China Lake. There's already the, the sniper guy and the RPG guys up there. But now, look, there they are, coming out of the woodwork. So, it's up to you now how you want to proceed after this bit. Because there's not really much that I can say to help. As uh, they're all going to start walking around in kind of a way that uh, might be difficult to um, predict. And the fact that as well, there's that brute guy. You can't take him out and stuff. I did try. All you can do is pop his helmet off. So the two plans of action are either just start shooting people, uh, if you feel comfortable doing that, or you can hang back and wait for people to cross this area. I think the most I managed to get was three before I got bored, but you do have to do a lot of waiting around. I would hang back and just, uh, as someone crossed my path, just get them one by one. If people do see you, you can always go back to the uh, original area that you came from and just hide, and then they'll uh, think that you're gone, so you can uh, take a breather that way. But yeah, hopefully taking out that many people will make this bit significantly easier for you, even though you can't do the whole thing properly in true stealth. We're in Chapter 8 now, and this is the aptly named Helicopter Fight. Again, like the APC, if the helicopter sees you, well, the turret bit mainly, it's game over. So uh, always be wary of that. So we're going to take these uh, two guys out first. Make sure you get into the grass, otherwise Nadine will um, get up in there and she might not do a good, as good a job as you're going to do of hiding the body. And even worse, at the moment my Sam is broken, so he doesn't even worse job, he just gets in the way. Grab um, the silence pistol over here really quick because we are going to need that uh, later on in the, um, in the run. So uh, we're not actually going to kill everybody in this um, section. There's just no point really and it just will take way too long. There becomes a certain point as well when uh, if you've killed uh, a certain number of people, Orca will ask for an update of what's going down and uh, someone somewhere will see a body even if you've hidden them all and everyone will just start walking around looking for you. So there's really no point. It just takes long waiting to kill everyone and the way this works you won't have to worry anyway about the people that are left. Uh, but I'll explain that when we get to that bit. Uh, at the moment, we're going to we're going to take out a good number of people and get all the um, explosives that we'll need along the way. So, as you saw in the background, there was the armored guy, but we're going to take this guy out first. I fumbled this slightly because it can be quite hard to get past this bit. But as long as you just 
get to him and start mashing square, um, you should be good. Sometimes you can kick him off into the water, which is good. But either way, no one will see him over there. Right, this next bit is all about timing. The timing of this is very important. So make sure if you're following this guide, be on point with all the timings that I'm hitting. Because otherwise this you won't have the rotation that I'm about to have. So um, don't have wandered off beforehand. <laughs> So these two will have a conversation. Don't kill the guy that was leaning against the truck before these two have a conversation because if you do that, the other guy will just stare at the lockbox forever, waiting to have the conversation. He'll never move, which will be kind of frustrating. So yeah, once that's happened, wait for him to fully lean on the truck. Don't go too early. Then you can lean up on it and pull him round. As you can see here, the armored guy is coming and I'm just gonna wait until he passes me and then get behind him and uh, take him down. Now someone will see this act, but that is good. We want him to see it. it's the far away guy. Now as long as you've taken him down kind of early, this armored guy, the second guy that's just walked around, he won't see it. If, if he does see it, it's not a terrible thing, but um, it means that look, Nadine was able to take him out there. Nadine seems to take him out, I'd say 90% of the time she does it, so you don't have to worry about it. And then we can run over and get this guy while he's out of position. Otherwise, it's quite difficult to get him because he doesn't really, um... He has a very short bit where he comes and walks out and turns around. It's, uh... His opportunity to kill him is, um, not great. So we're gonna get this lockbox here, which has an RPG shot, and then the C4 that's in the box below. Don't worry too much about the helicopter. It can't really see you, uh, from this angle. So we're going to run over here, just checking where it is. And it's very hard to see because the sun is so bright. But there is a guy here. I'm not taking cover on this because I find that sometimes I get stuck on that lamppost there. So I'm just going to stand and uh, watch and wait for him. The second he turns around, we're going to get this lockbox. However, sometimes the helicopter, depending on what's happened before, the helicopter might just fly over his head as he's turning around. If that happens, wait for the next rotation. But here I've got enough time... Um, to open this box. Also, if you're confident with your lockboxing abilities, then um, you should be able to do this before the helicopter makes it all the way around to you. Uh, as you can see, the helicopter... Yeah, that's coming just round. We're waiting over here because this is the lowest that the helicopter's going to get, and it's your best opportunity, I find, to uh, throw the C4 onto it. So yeah, aim. I like to aim for the tail just to make sure I definitely get it on there. I swear one time I threw it and it went all the way through the helicopter and all the way out of the flipping map. Now we're making our way to the next lock box to get a third RPG shot. I can't believe that you can only have three. Has that always been an Uncharted thing? I can't remember, but... You don't need all three, really. This is just an insurance policy in case you miss one of the shots. Because um, you do only need to hit it with three explosives and then you can um, you can grab onto the helicopter. So, this is what I was talking about. Now, whoever you kill next, the orca is going to ask for an update. So, you know what? I'm just going to use my silent pistol and kill this guy and I don't care if someone sees him. It doesn't really matter at this point. It'll actually help you. So I'm just going to wait for the helicopter to go round. Also, as you can see, the C4 acts as like a little marker for the helicopter. And it helps you keep an eye on it, which is actually quite handy. Maybe I should have done that for the APC. If I had thrown um, the C4 onto it, I could have kept my eye on that too. Be also aware and uh, look at the corner in the um, right-hand side. Just for the sniper guys, they sometimes come over here uh, before climbing up here just to... You know, just to be on the safe side. And then we're going to shoot him. So as you can hear, Orca is now asking for that update. There's two guys in this room that... These two would have normally had a conversation if you'd got here um, earlier. But um, now because they're on the lookout, they're not. So you can quickly kill that guy. Now the only person you have to really worry about is that armoured guy. The other three people is an RPG guy and two sniper guys. They don't actually leave their posts. Even though they've been told we're here, they don't actually leave. It's just that one guy. And because the area is so big, he normally ends up wandering about halfway across the other side of the map. So you don't really have to be too scared if he's coming back. But just, just keep an eye out for him, just in case. 
So I'm going to wait for the helicopter to make its way all the way around, and then we're going to we're going to go for it. The good thing about being over here is that you're also sheltered from the RPG guy and the two sniper guys and all the reinforcements that come. That's why I was like hell bent that I needed to get to this long grass and this section because this building is going to save your life. Alright, here it comes. So before I set off the C4, I want to get my first uh, RPG shot off just to line that up nicely. And then we're going to get the C4. And then we'll go for another shot. Now, I was going to go for a third one, but then I saw the uh, prompt for L1. So just be, whatever you do, just keep your eye up in the sky waiting for that L1. As soon as you see it, mash it, climb, and you are out of there. Here we go. Ready? Ready. Final section now is the train oh, ambush Happy in here. chapter 9. This is the last place we can do some stealth because after you get through this bit, then everything's going to go crazy. This one can be very tricky to do, not going to lie. It's not that this bit is particularly hard, it's just there's a lot of factors working against you, so mistakes may be made and it's not necessarily your fault. Some of those being, for instance, Nadine, she might rush ahead and kill people. Like, I've had issues with her killing this guy before I get to kill him, which causes some problems as the next guy will see the body and stuff. It's not too big an issue later if she kills people. It's more this first carriage that I don't want to mess up their rotation. But sometimes she gets bloodthirsty and she does that and it can be a little bit frustrating. The other issue is because we're on a moving train, that can also make things difficult. Like, sometimes I screw up the platforming because I'm turning a corner or something. Also, you can't hide the bodies necessarily, as when the train turns, the bodies will just slide off the edge, which means that people might see them. But not a big deal. If people do see the bodies, like they do uh, later on in my playthrough, especially after this carriage, it doesn't change a thing. You can still do this method. Nobody changes the way they walk, so that's good. Now, for this guy, I'm just going to wait. Now, when he comes around this corner, don't grab him straight away. Wait a beat, like I do, and then grab him. Because, I don't know if you could tell, but there's a guy... You can see him in the crack a little bit. I was looking up there earlier. But this sniper guy, he can see you if you do it too soon. So that's why I just give it a little bit of time. So I'm going to grab him over the edge. And, uh, I don't know, I'm just going to get the sniper. Might be useful later. And then I can go around and take this armoured guy out fairly easily now. So we're going to go out of the window. Now I do something naughty here. I go out and I just climb straight up when I should have checked my corners. Rookie mistake. So make sure that when you're climbing up, just you want to be sure that this guy at the top on this other carriage doesn't see you climbing up. I don't know. That was a uh, naughty Lucy. There's also a guy uh, underneath uh, that might see you as you jump across. I'm just keeping a lookout for him. But the coast is clear, so I'm just going to jump across and pull him down. So this is where uh, someone might see something. This guy below, depending on where he is, he might be this side, he might be that side, he might see the person's body fly off the edge. But on this occasion, he hasn't. However, when I kill this guy next, I don't know who sees him, but someone sees him. But like I said earlier, not a big deal. So just wait a little bit and then boot him off the edge. I'm going to hang tight here because I just want to get my bearings. I don't want to rush in, fools rush in, as they say. So I'm going to wait until the guy that's going to come out um, comes out. And then when he turns around and goes back in, and then I'm going to go run to the next carriage. This next one is particularly tricky, but there there is a knack to it. But it's it takes a lot of precision. So we're going to go get this guy first. I probably could have just pulled him over the edge, but I thought he was further along than he was. And then I got stuck on this, which, and I was really afraid to roll, just in case I fell off. And then Nadine, she takes out this guy, and now she might do that. Sometimes she runs ahead and takes out the guy on top of the carriage, which, uh, I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse. But either way, what you could do for that guy is wait to pull him round here, or you can jump off at the top and do a jumping takedown on him. A little bit risky, I have fallen off a couple of times doing that. Now before I go for these armoured guys, I'm just checking to see what they're doing, because this would be the perfect time now to pull that guy out the window, but... Sometimes the timings are a little bit different, so I just want to watch to see what they're up to. But now I know that there's a good window of opportunity to get him, pun intended. So I'm going to climb across here. Now I got kind of lucky as the train was turning. This guy, in the very far distance, he can see you here on his route back. So just be aware, if you see him coming back, just quickly scramble back here and uh, wait until the next opportunity to pull that guy out the window because, uh, yeah, I've been spotted by him a couple of times, especially when the train is turning a corner, which isn't in your favour.
Once this guy is looking out the window, run up and pop his helmet off. And now you've only got two more people left. So I'm going to be super duper cautious with these two. Because if someone sees you, especially here, I found that if I tried to run and grab this guy while he was looking off the train, it more, more times than not, he would see me running towards him from the side. And uh, yeah, that would trigger people on cars coming, which if you're on that carriage, you're really exposed. So you don't want that to happen. So... Just uh, even those two more people left, things are still dangerous. And I found this is the quickest way to take out the armored guy because then you don't have to pull his helmet off. We're going to do a jumping down attack on him. As long as you jump somewhere in that guy's direction, you should get automatically locked onto him. Uh, if you do a really bad jump, however, you may jump off the train, which would suck. So uh, I don't know if my jump was particularly the best jump in the world, but it did the job there. And now we only have the last guy left. And like I said, I'm just going to really wait until his back is turned to get him. And then you have done it. That's the last one. We're clear. For now, let's get to the engine. That brings us to the end of all the areas I found you can stealth in Uncharted The Lost Legacy. As always, I hope this guide helped you guys out. If you would like to add any extra tips, please put them in the comments below and then together we can help everyone out. Anyone else? No? Thank you all so much for watching this video. Making these stealth guides has really been a labour of love because I absolutely adore the Uncharted games and I'm so sad that this could be the last one. However, if another Uncharted game does come out, you can rest assured that I'll grab my ninja gear once again. But until that day arrives, I'll be waiting patiently in the long grass. We just did a thing. We did.